Hello there and a warm welcome to yet another edition of Eco at Africa. My name is Joy Doreen Bira. Yes, it's me. I know you're thinking the glasses, but I'm just trying to mimic NT in Nigeria. NT, how are you doing? Hello, everybody. Hello, Joy. I'm Nell Tagbe and I'm here in the Jabi Lake area of Abuja, Nigeria. Today, we've got some exciting environmental stories to tell you. This week, we travel to Kenya, where local farmers are turning invasive water hyacinth into a valuable resource, fertilizer. In Senegal, we meet people suffering from the impact of climate change. We also meet the president to ask him what the Senegalese government is doing about it. And we visit activists in Germany who are trying to protect the sturgeon, one of the oldest fish species on the planet. In Senegal, farmers are struggling to make a living. Drought and climate change is making the soil ever drier. Added to that, the felling of mangrove trees along the Atlantic coast has left the land vulnerable to saltwater intrusion. Now, a pilot project is helping local farmers improve the quality of the soil. How does this work? We're all interested in finding out. Let's take a look. Rice and millet used to grow here. Now, nothing does. Salty water from the nearby ocean has contaminated the groundwater. El Hajj Balesea says 10% of farmland in this region has been lost. The soil is denuded, completely saturated with salt. There are even certain parts that have acidified which really shows how far salinization has intruded into this village. The village's name is Pech. El Hajj Balay Seye from the International Union for Conservation of Nature wants to help. The villagers live from what they can grow. Right now, farmers are preparing this field for planting. <laughs> This millet is left over from the last harvest. The women will later turn it into couscous. Nowadays, they have to buy other grains to add to it. Because of salinization, we can't harvest enough rice anymore. What we picked used to last a year. But because of the salt, the soil is no longer good. Still, we keep going. But for how long? Like Pej, many villages in the region are threatened by salinization. We go with Seye to the nearby national park in the Sina Saloum Delta. He tells us that mangroves, which usually provide natural barriers, have been massively clear-cut. And that's why the salt water from the Atlantic is pushing into the delta. In addition, increasing droughts and flooding threaten the region. The next day, Seye travels to Pech again. He's running a project here and in five other villages in which the communities build small dam-like ridges called diget. They're meant to prevent salt water from further permeating the soil and keep the fields from eroding. The diget also catch rainwater, adding fresh water to the groundwater. We haven't yet studied the real impact of these structures in restoring the soil. But we found them to be interesting, because they're not very expensive compared to those built for other projects. At the same time, this is a traditional technique. The villagers support the diget building as well as reforestation, which is also part of the project. New plants improve the fields because they stabilize the soil and protect it from wind erosion. It's true that the state has established a national park and there are communal nature reserves. But we also want nature to recover on cultivated fields. But that doesn't always go smoothly. Bringing an ecosystem back into balance demands compromise. Water has to be shared. 
Livestock can't graze everywhere. Protecting resources often means reducing consumption. It's said that in the past, kings were buried in this inconspicuous place. Nowadays, the residents of Pej come here to pray for rain for their crops. If they lose their livelihood and have to move away, it will mean a loss of cultural identity. It's crucial for Senegalese farmers, NGOs and civil society as a whole to get involved in protecting the environment, but they also need help from the Senegalese government. That's right, and something seems to be happening in that regard. Senegal's president, Macky Sall, says he wants to invest in green technologies for the future. That's what he explained to Ecuador Africa in an interview. Solar energy makes a very important contribution for a start in terms of capacity. After just 18 months, we're already producing more than 120 megawatts of solar energy. That's very significant. It's around one-fifth of the capacity in Senegal. We're continuing to expand it further by an additional 100 megawatts. We have other sources of renewable energy, such as wind energy. We're aiming to produce an additional 150 megawatts from wind in Senegal, on top of solar power. Our renewable energy sources are wind, sun and hydropower. We combine all three of these natural resources with conventional energy sources. Senegal is doing a lot to tackle climate change. We welcome German efforts in Africa to boost investment in this area, including the G20 initiative, which is a pact for the whole of Africa. Within this partnership, I believe Germany is a very important player in this field. Along with other African leaders, I will be visiting Germany to examine this new pact with Africa. Energy production and climate change will most certainly be at the top of the agenda with this new cooperation.